continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Warner Anderson as Matthew Swain, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Mia Farrell as Allison McKenzie, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, and Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson. Shy a few glasses. I'll get them. If someone will point me to the right cabinet. Oh, Allison, I think that's a great color for you. Thank you. Isn't your paper due today? Yes, I'm going to finish it at lunch. What paper is that? It's called The Mystique of the Sea, from Conrad to O'Neill. A catchy title, don't you think? I think keeping up with a girl in college is an education in itself. I'd like to read it when it's finished. Well, just remember, you ask. Allison, your mother and I were wondering about last night. Mrs. Schuster couldn't find anyone to help take care of her daughter, so I said I'd help. I think I'll stop by the library on my way back from school and see if I can pick up some books on the subject. What subject? Oh, that's right, you weren't here. Their daughter, Kim, is deaf. Oh. She's, uh, she's very bright and sensitive. I, I feel she needs somebody, a companion. A companion? Might be good for both of us. I don't think you have time to get yourself involved with the Schusters. I think your schoolwork comes first. I can do both. Well, let's let it rest for a while. We'll talk about it some other time. Are you postponing the question or dismissing it? No, I'm considering it, Allison. As your father. Excuse me, I'll be late. Have a good day, dear. Thank you. What was that all about? I'm just calling the father's protective instinct. What are you protecting her from? I just don't like the idea. I'm confused. Aren't you the one that insisted we give Allison more independence? Because without it, we don't suffocate. Elliot Carson, the instant father. <laughs> I suppose the next thing I want to do is keep Allison under glass. That's what I did. It all takes time. That's my life. It's a good one.
Janet, you may start breakfast now. Oh, I just want some coffee. No, no, no. You have to have a good breakfast. You had a bad night. That's putting it mildly. That's so unusual for you. Uh, Mr. Growley, Bear, could I have part of the paper? Thank you. Um, could I ask you uh, one question and then you can mum from peace? Well, what was on your mind? Business. Oh. Well, thank you. Now you can sulk happily. Oh, it's just that I'm uh, going to have a rough weekend. Last night, in the middle of the night, it occurred to me how rough it's going to be. Oh, David. Well, you'll take care of everything. Oh, I'll do what has to be done. I just hope I can do it well. Is uh, something in particular bothering you? I have to lay off some workers. What do you mean, lay them off? I've got to fire them. Something Leslie Harrington should have caught. There's too much duplication. You can imagine how popular that's going to make me around here. Is Kim still asleep? No, no, she's up in her room. After what uh, Allison told us last night about her talking to herself, I thought I could get her to talk to me. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Schuster. But I just didn't get anywhere. Well, we have to be patient, darling. David, what do you think about uh, hiring Allison as a sort of a companion for Kim? Oh, thank you. I mean, why not? She's been able to get through to her. We never have. Well, how can we be sure about the Mackenzie girl? You can trust her, no matter what you've heard. What do you mean, no matter what we've heard? Well, you'll hear it. Mrs. Chernick. You won't get it from me. What was that all about? I don't know, but we better find out. Oh, we'll find out, David. This is a small town. Wait a minute. Maybe I wasn't imagining it. Last night, when I took Allison home, her stepfather acted very strangely. He didn't say anything, but it was the way he looked at me. I suddenly felt like I was a teenager bringing his daughter home from a date. Like I had something to feel guilty about. You didn't uh, talk about it when you came home last night. Well, why should I? I have nothing to feel guilty about. Listen, you can wear one of my shirts if you promise to get it laundered. Can't make a promise like that. I might ruin my image. <laughs> well, you got 15 minutes to get your image to school. I was going to wear this on graduation day, but one must learn to make do. Watch it. You got a paternal gleam in your eye. You know what that leads to. Listen, Lon. I'm just trying to do you a favor. I don't want you spending all your time worrying about me. I, uh, I found these in the closet. I think you're going to need them for your morning classes. There you go again. But it's not your fault. How did you know I was going to cut my morning classes? Uh, do you mind telling me, uh, just a casual observer, why you're cutting your morning classes? Not at all. I'm hungry. I'm starving. I, uh, don't remember having dinner last night. Oh, I know I started to. With you and Dr. Rossi watching me. Trying to help me, make sure I didn't make a mess of things. Norman, I, I offered to make your breakfast this morning when I made mine. You said that thanks a lot, but no thanks, right? Right. Rod, listen. I'm trying to do you a favor, us a favor. I don't want you to be my father, my big brother, my cook, or even my psychiatrist. I just want you to be my buddy, my friend. Understand? I understand. Hey, 
Buddy. Could you do me a favor? What's that? Well, I'm a little short on money, so, and I'm dying of hunger. So could you lend me a couple of bucks until payday, so I can have breakfast? Yeah, OK. Just remember to pay me back, huh? Thanks a lot, buddy. Listen, uh, Norman, if you don't stop cutting those classes, you're not going to have to worry about what to wear on graduation day. Norman Harrington. Right. Stephen Cord. I'm Hannah Cord's son. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, fine, fine. Good. My mother's fine, too. She has to be remembered to you. Did she? Yeah. You know, I was always afraid of her. So was I. <laughs> I was sorry to hear about your mother's death. Thanks. Now, the whole aftermath. It's a tough word to say, isn't it? Murder. Yeah. You dare me to say it. Well, you said it. What are you doing here? Came to see Theodore Dell. I hope to be working with him. Oh, yeah, I heard you became a lawyer. I was with Wainwright and Kennerly. They handled legal matters for your grandfather. Handle? Well, he wants Mr. Dell to handle them now. Norman, your grandfather doesn't believe your mother killed Elizabeth Carson. Well, he isn't the only one that feels that way. Thanks. That makes three of us. You still in school? I'm in and out. I'm cutting this morning. No? Just a rebellious teenager. Oh, I read about you. Yeah, we've taken over the country. <laughs> Ready to be taken. Want to help? Oh, I'm too old. <laughs> Funny bit. Here we are at the counter again. The old kitchen. Oh, but that was different then. We were on opposite sides. I couldn't have bothered you. I remember the pots and pans hanging down in front of the old china cabinet. They used to hang right in front of my chair. I'd look to the right, I'd see Rod and face all shiny and combed and brushed. And I'd look straight ahead, I'd see you through a big wire sieve. <laughs> How did I look to you? Big. Is that all? What'd you expect from me? Oh, class warfare. <laughs> Rod and I always ate in the kitchen because we hated that dumb dining room table. On a clear day, you could see father. Hear from him? Now and then. Uh, you gonna be around a while? I hope so. Look, I'll take care of it. No, no, thank you. It's really good seeing you again. You know, you might as well cut the whole day. You get into just as much trouble if you show up late. This way you can claim a virus. Oh, I don't have a mother and father to sign the note. <laughs> Look, Rod and I live upstairs. So give a couple of knocks, come on in. We'll be glad to see you again. Bye. Bye now. Bye-bye. 